Hello guys, it's Shinkin Place, I'm Fabio Pisco and today, after like 6 days, I bring you a new video. I have been quite away, I, I have been answering people on the comment section, of course I've been active on the comment section, but I have been not launching videos because I was not quite in the mood to do it and I was expecting some, some hardware, some material and I was testing it um, and well, I was enjoying the uh, life of, uh, of a gamer, I was gaming a bit so everyone loves to game a bit, if you are watching my channel you love to game of course but anyway, today's video is about overclocking the RX Vega 56 my version is the Sapphire version, the Sapphire Pulse version but it serves for almost every single RX Vega 56 so don't worry if your model is different and well, just let me get this Pow! <laughs> Jokes apart guys, Vega is a different arc, so it's quite a lot different overclocking this Vega uh, from overclocking let's say an RX 580 or an RX 570 the overclocking and the tricks, the tricks to do it are quite different you have to, to mess a lot with, uh, with the voltage, with the boost and well, I'll show you in the video of course but before that, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video. This is like a Korean dance, like tan tan tan. Anyway, don't forget, hit like, subscribe, share the video because that helps a lot. And let's now go to the part that really matters. The overclocking tips and it's like Linus tech tits. Doesn't matter. Let's now go to the, to the really interesting part, the overclocking. See you soon. So like I said before, Vega cards are quite different and they have some tips and some tricks we have to do in order to get the most we can out of them. Unlike the, the, the RX 4 and 5 series, which, which are quite easy to, to overclock, Vega has some different approaching. So let's start the overclocking part in reality using the AMD Wattman. So if you have the AMD driver... <laughs> So if you have the AMD drivers installed, just right click on the on the desktop. Sorry. Ah. Uh, go to the AMD Radiant settings, go to the gaming tab. Okay, and now you have several games, the games you play, they will appear here, and the global settings. So you can make a, a custom profile for each game you play, but let's go to the global settings now because it's it's more important. After this, here it is, Global Watman. Let's open it. So Vega cards have one thing that are not presented on the older generations, which is this on the top. So you, you have the power saving mode, the balanced mode, which is the, um, the default one, the turbo mode and the custom mode. If you want the max performance you can get out of the box, just select the turbo mode and you'll be fine but your GPU will be consuming a lot, a lot of power and will be heating up a lot more than needed. So let's now go to the custom part which will unlock this crap on the bottom. This, the first part on orange, is the, the GPU overclocking, the GPU core overclocking. The part on violet, or rose if you want, violet, um, is the HBM2 overclocking, so VRAM overclocking. And the part on the bottom is fan speed and temperature, um, temperature and power limits. The first thing you want to do if you want the max you can get, uh, and if selecting a custom profile, is to put the power limit at the max. These cards eat a lot of power, they heat a lot of power, um, and they draw a lot, really. Um, but we'll change that. Uh, we'll change that in in the next steps. But first step done, we are okay. For the temperature, I like to keep it at 75 um, 75 degrees max. So once the GPU uh, reach 75 degrees, the fans will stop ramping up and speeding up in order to cool the graphic card uh, the graphic card down to cool it down. Uh, so 75 degrees is a completely fine temperature uh, for these cards. 
Let's now start with the core frequency. These GPUs have a quite different approaching. What happens is that um, you have to find the sweet spot between the voltage and between the frequency. Unlike the RX4 series and the RX5 series, where you select the frequency you want and then select the voltage, go into the game. If it happens that you have not enough voltage for that frequency, the GPU will simply show artifacts or will even crash your PC. This will not happen on Vega 56. What may happen is that once you you select, for example, um, you select, for example, a speed, let's say 1700. Once you select 1700, if you don't have voltage enough to to handle these speeds, what will happen is that the um, the boost speeds will not reach as high as you um, you inserted. So imagine if the voltage is not okay for this speed. Vega, um, the own card, your own card, will underclock in order to not crash. This is fine and not fine at the same time because you have to find a sweet spot between the voltage and between the frequency. I will go. I will show you my settings now. So, load, best, so original best, and that's it. So from 1.2 volts, we had 1.2 volts and I reduced it to 1 volt and 70, 1.07 volts, which is a lot of different uh, difference guys. So reducing the voltage to this point will make the card a lot cooler and will make the card consume a lot less power. It was consuming on stock at 1600, not even 1600 boost clock, so uh, close to, um, to 1550 MHz on the boost clocks and while having that clock while having a lower clock than I use it was consuming around 250 to 270 watts on the GPU only so the card was consuming around third, uh, 300 yes 300 watts which is a lot in my opinion I have it consuming from let's say 200 to 220 watts while being faster and being cooler. So the first step is to find a sweet spot like I said before. Imagine at this point with with 1662 megahertz on core and 1070 um, millivolts the, the my GPU, my Vega 56 will boost to around 1600 megahertz which is the, the way I wanted it to do. But I had to test it and try, try and miss several times before getting this properly done. The thing is, imagine if you want, if you wanted to keep the the boosted overclocking, the boosted, um, not the boosted overclocking, the frequency that I've put. If I wanted it, I would have to raise the voltage. Imagine it is doing, um, is it is doing a boost of let's say. Uh, 1600 megahertz. If I want more megahertz, I need to raise the voltage, for example, to 1100. And if I raise the voltage to 1100, the card will boost a lot more and will start getting closer to the clocks I've selected. So it's kind of a sweet spot. But you can also do this and raise, for example, to 1700, and the card will boost even more with the same voltage. So it's quite of a hit and miss, really. Um, it's not much to say, but you have to try a sweet spot and see if it works for you. If it doesn't work, reduce the voltage. If it needs more more voltage, add more voltage. If you don't want uh, such higher frequency, so you can simply underclock and undervolt even further in order to not draw as much power. This is basically it. I, I tr I'm trying to, um, to explain it the best I can, guys. Um, as far as the HBM, the stock frequency is 800. This is also a lottery. You might have Micron chips, you might have Samsung chips, and you might have luck or not. Um, mine can clearly do uh, 920 MHz, but if I start going higher than that, let's say, uh, 930, 950, I will start seeing artifacts. 1000, so 1 volt is the, the sweet spot of the voltage to HBM. But I can even go further and go 11,000, 1100, sorry, 1100, and it will make no difference. My HBM won't go higher, at least 
at least of course stable, won't go higher than 920 MHz. So it's also a lottery. And there's not much much more to say, really. It's all a matter of, of trying, of, of seeing and trying. Try again, you failed, try again, you failed, try again. And that's mostly it. If you want any kind, um, any kind of advice and imagine, if you have any kind of doubt, you can simply go to the comment section, ask me, and I will answer you the best way I can. Sorry once more for, for this, because I'm, I'm kind of ill, I'm kind of sick, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, since English is not my main language, when I'm sick I tend to not speak it so well properly, not speak it so properly and so well, like I'm doing now, I'm doing garbage. Uh, but I hope this really helps you in some way. If you have any doubt, one more time, go to the comment section. So, on the GPU, on the GPU once more, just let me tell you this. On the GPU, it's a matter of sweet spot. So, raise the voltage if you want more boost clock, but also raise the frequency. You have to raise the frequency and raise the voltage, or even raise the frequency and decrease the voltage to the under vaulting, and that will indeed help a lot. As for the HBM, you don't, uh, it really has a static, a static value. So it won't keep boosting and underclocking and over overclocking. It won't do that, but that will happen on the GPU core. If you want to see how it fares on some games, just watch this video. Uh, is also on the the cards, so watch it. Also in the description, the link. Watch this video, and you will see the card boosting to around 1600 MHz on these settings. Thanks a lot for watching, sorry for anything, sorry if you didn't quite understand this because this is not um, a complete science, you need to really find the sweet spot, at least on the GPU core. Um, use my settings if you want, use my settings because because they may work for you, if, if they don't work for you, just keep trying to find the sweet spot, um, and that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget hit like, subscribe and share the video if this video helped you in some way. And see you in the next one.